Thanks for tuning in to Becoming Something, where we promise to keep the conversation honest and real for young adults in their 20s and 30s. Every moment we live is training for a future moment, and that's why we do this podcast, because we want you to be prepared for everything that life is going to throw at you. Our hope with this podcast is that it would help you become all that God desires you to be. So with that in mind, let's jump right in to this week's episode of Becoming Something. What's up, podcast world? It's your boy, JP, in the podcast studio with these guys. What's up? I, I'm uncomfortable. I just, I feel like mm. it's just You look weird. uncomfortable. Here, here it goes. <laughs> you look Come uncomfortable. On, I have this very natural tree next yeah. to me. <laughs> Why are you uncomfortable? It's just, it's weird that, like, you, so you've been making fun of Kathy for a while now. And now, like, I... Her husband came mm. today. He's in the room. Like, I had to bring like, my husband because like I was afraid case, of what case, you guys have been he's saying. He's in the room. He's like, one of very he, few people whose size I'm intimidated he by. He could maybe hurt you guys. Do you think he'd fight you? Dude, he, I mean, you, he is aggressive and violent. I just feel he's, like y'all yeah. can't say anything bad about me anymore. So this is like the best. <laughs> oh, but I can no. say whatever I want about you guys. No, that came up in his interview. It oh. was literally like, hey, are you are you going to be okay if, if I still dog on Your Kathy? Wife. And he was like. I dog like on Kathy. On. Like, that's, like, please. <laughs> Whatever. He's, he I, said this morning, he goes, I really wanted to work there before, but they had a nepotism clause then. Yes. Yeah. And clearly we don't have one anymore. <laughs> that got me. Well, honestly, though. It was funny because he was around before, but he was like a contract worker. So we're getting around the nepotism clause, but now he's back. Now he's back. Yeah. Guess he's back. So back he's again. Back. So uh, fun. Are y'all gonna All make that, that makes no sense to anybody listening. Yeah. <laughs> but it was, right yeah. behind it that camera is Matt Davidson, Kathy's husband. That's what He's all that banter now. is about. It just feels weird that when Adley applied, you're like, I just, qu- I, I so deeply questioned your decision making ability because she chose because to marry she you. chose you. That yeah, bro. Although you're very qualified, a real we talk. Can't hire you. It's so funny you said that because because this is a true story, and I'm. I'm Doing quick calculations if I should tell it or not. You should definitely do. Uh, but because we are a podcast known authentic. for authenticity, yeah. I will tell it. <laughs> oh um, I worked at a church and Monica interviewed there, and uh, they were like, "Oh no, because of nepotism." Because you know JP's coming, JP's coming on, and I was like, "What?" It's like we have so many husbands and wives, and <laughs> it's like, "No, that they don't, y'all aren't telling the truth, man." No like, there's way. a yeah, oh, true they story. Made it up. That's amazing. Higher. Yeah, it's funny. Well, they're lost. Oh my gosh. No, it's just a. I'm sure it's just one of those things got mixed mixed in communication. Speaking <laughs> of making fun. So of all me. that to say, we can't hire Adelie because of nepotism. Oh, yeah. that's right. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, we'd take her. Yeah, we could switch that. One. Oh, I would love to be a stay at home dad. Yeah. No, you it's, would it's not. Like, you would it last is like a. It's like twenty four hours. Hey, do you want a vacation? Wow. For the rest of your life. You need to never. That's, see this that's on the Nate Hilgen Camp. It's yeah. in Hilgen Camp at Harriscreek dot org. And his that's actually my is... real email. <laughs> You're not supposed people to can, do that. People can figure it out. Well, that's true. Anyways. It is online. Yeah. What were you gonna say? I feel like y'all could make fun of my outfit right now if you wanted to. I, I, why? I feel like I kind of look a little bit like an Australian <laughs> like, zookeeper. What, I, what just happened? <laughs> I'm not going to make fun of your like, outfit. Kathy's like, Kathy's like guys, y'all haven't talked about me in at least <laughs> three minutes. Can we bring the attention? That's the like the least. Uh, Matt got it for me. I feel like it's too trendy for me. But I'm that's like it. the least. Where that would I would have not ever thought anything. Take it back. Let's edit that out of the podcast. I like that Thank outfit. You. Actually, that was what I was looking for. Yeah, there you go. There we go. Oh, oh, man. Hey, so guys, anything about my outfit? Yeah, anything, anything you want to say, good or bad, I'll take hey, any, any attention. Any compliments that you're feeling oh, right now? My have you noticed too. my headband? Or my birthday? Whatever is her birthday. Nate, you could have just said happy birthday. You never tell me happy birthday. She didn't. I didn't see she you. Didn't text me. It's called a text message. You JP didn't text didn't her on her either. birthday, dude. Everyone put that else on in your our calendar. life group did except for Nate. There was Everyone. a lot going on in their lives. Yeah. Yeah. Not. I, your... I texted you and I was yeah. on a plane. It didn't go, and then I saw later that day it didn't go. I was. Oh. I was. Yeah. That struggle with service. Anyway. Uh, sure. <laughs> oh wow. As a. I, so you gotta I'm, be like worst life group member. <laughs> I mean, I was just thinking like, like do I want to be in life someone. group with Nate? I don't <laughs> think so. 
No comment. Gonna like meal train. Nate's yeah. like, oh man, I don't can't cook. I got this gift card from Starbucks. Which <laughs> it's got two dollars and thirty six cents on it. You're welcome to. <laughs> True story. I've started a meal train for myself before. No, you <laughs> have Totally believe it. One hundred percent. Yeah. yeah. Uh, anyway, so I'm, I'm so everyone knows this. But I'm kind of like a national speaker, and I go around and speak across the country. I was at a young adult ministry on Thursday, and uh, there one of them, the 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 pastors there was like, "Hey, is this is this true for you guys? We have all these amazing like young adult women here, mm -hmm. like so many, and yep. and there's like, I I could I could tell you on two hands how many." amazing guys we have here that's what he said yeah yeah he's like is that true there i'm like bro one thousand percent yeah i think that's so true and i think that's like the biggest frustration one of the biggest frustrations of the, our young adult female listeners yep. right now is like where are all the christian guys yep when you speak somewhere like what is the payment <laughs> I, I saw, Do you tie here's it? the deal no 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 so you know like, no 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 listen 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 okay. this is smart i'm just curious so, no, how much you have listen, to pay listen, them uh, oh dang it <laughs> So like you, so in our staff prayer, you're like Amazon ran at a loss for seven years, and it's like, man, that's backwards thinking. But now it's the most profitable company in the world. Yeah. If I just keep paying people to get my name out there, eventually things are gonna uh, they're wow. gonna switch. I keep telling Adley that yeah. I'm like, I know, like right putting all this on a credit bleeding. card is not working. Right now we're bleeding cash. Yeah, but, but eventually. Uh, That's funny that y'all making the that. same joke. So, so there's <laughs> not as funny as your you outfit. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Why do I talk sometimes? The, um, Here's what I'm gonna say. Every girl listening to this podcast just now was like saying amen. When it does. We were talking. It does feel weird. I feel like Matt was like, should I laugh at that or not? It does feel weird. I'll I'm be just honest. trying not to look it at does, him. He's like, he's like. <laughs> kick his butt after this that's some things to do uh man so more more healthy godly girls than guys yeah it's a problem um i just want to know why why is there such a discrepancy like girls and boys both have the same chances right why following jesus yeah i follow jesus i would think why are they not the way that girls are what goes wrong how long has it been a problem? Do we have any perspective there? Statistics show. Is this always? I mean, the, it's, they're, always they're, the it's more women have gone to church than men for a yeah. while. But I think if you charted this, and this is a hypothesis, I think, or a theory, I should say, I think that social media was the explosion of this um, discontentment. I remember doing a series called Gen Y, uh, Generation W H Y question mark, oh, and um, we were talking about the invention of the word FOMO, uh -huh. so fear of missing out. And at the time, it had it had started at Harvard. Somebody had first used the expression FOBO, fear of a better option, and so FOBO turned into FOMO. And that fear of a better option, I think, is what keeps guys single uh i think is what kind of keeps them out of the dating game like they they would rather um not commit to someone and play the field mm -hmm. and they prioritize looks and it's just it's this it's this trick of the enemy yeah because it's like the, the scripture says beauty is fleeting <clears throat> but every 24 25 26 year old is trying to find the hottest 24, 25, 26 year old, mm. you know, really 23, 24, 25 year old. Mm -hmm. And um, because they think, well, wow, she's always going to look like that. Mm. And um, I would just say, man, not necessarily. I mean, she's going to probably, I mean, genetics are powerful. She's going to probably look just like her mom. And um, I'm not trying to be weird about that. I just, I don't, I think we're really short sighted in this. Mm -hmm. I don't think we think about the the long Watch game mm -hmm. and the beauty is fleeting and so you're going to be left with you know can is someone a good partner to you like that's really what you're looking for is like someone complimentary to your skill set and, and guys just don't get that i mean there's nothing that we're going to say on this podcast today that's going to convince it but that's why it feels like such a yeah. pointless like what are we going to do i mean girls are going to be like yeah i mean truly ladies forward this 
I hope you share. I hope you guys share the podcast on social media. You know, put the link and whatnot. Whether if you listen on Spotify and iTunes, and let's try to solve the problem. But I, I just feel like guys hear this. It goes in one ear and out the other. It's like, well, what do you want me to do? It's like I've said what I want you to do over and over and over and over and over. Find the godliest woman that you know and ask her out. And you're like, well, what if I'm not attracted to her? It's like, well, ask God to help you be attracted to the things that He's attracted mm-hmm. to. But if you're just physically attracted to her, I'm telling you, beauty is fleeting. Like the physical is going to change. So just think how long do you, I mean, like what is prime there? I mean, how do you got 10 years, seven years, five years of prime? I, and, and people think I'm like saying something crazy or misogynist. I'm not. I'm saying like, man, at the end of the day, gravity wins and people change and skin wrinkles and there's only so much Botox you can do. And I'm like, and at some point, it's weird. Like, you got really, you know, a f- really full face, <laughs> and it's weird. So stop doing that, you know? I'm just like, right? I, <laughs> I'm trying. I'm, I'm going to leave is, that one. This is no, my I'm best really effort. Like, this it. is my best effort to tell you to stop the Botox. <laughs> Oh my god. This whole topic was like, why are it's you doing working, it? man. It's no, a part of the whole not. speaking tour thing. Um I, do guys get offended when they hear that? What? Like are the guys listening right now being like, I don't do that? No, like, no, 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 no. Or do they know they do this? No, like so here's what just happened. So I've done this for a long time. <laughs> here's what happens. <laughs> like uh, some guys are like, It's not that easy. Yeah. It's not that easy. No, yeah. it really is that easy. Okay. And then some guys are like God fearing guys and they're like, Yeah, man, I get it. Like we we need to take some initiative. And then some guys are like, they're winning because they're like, dude, I learned that a long time ago. Hmm. Like the guys that have taken this advice I've done now, I don't know. I really don't know. 30 to 50 weddings. I don't maybe maybe 100. I don't know. Gosh, that's crazy to think about. But a lot of weddings. And I'm telling you guys that get this concept just win. Hmm. Yeah. Like I remember being playing golf with a guy once. You guys know him, by the way. And he was like, yeah, I think I want to get married. And I was like, oh, man, who's? Who who would you marry? I was, he was like, I don't know. I don't really have any prospects. I said, so who's the godliest woman you know? And he said her name. Stop it. And uh, and he's like, I was like, you should marry her. He's like, okay, I will. And then he took her on a date. The rest two, is history. Two kids later, happy marriage, thriving, amazing. And uh, I, I don't want to, like, oversell it. Like, I'm not saying don't put any priority on the other things. But there's so much oh, there's so much correction that has to happen here because mm. we put so much emphasis on, the on all the shallow things. Yeah. yeah. But so you said find the, the godliest girl, you know, and ask them out. Like, I think there are guys listening and going, I don't know any. And part of it is because they're not going to, like, the, the ministries, like the young adult ministries. Out. Because I, I do think, like, women are more relationally minded and they want to be around yeah. other people. Yeah. And guys are more like comfort minded where they'd rather sit at home and play yeah. call of duty or madden or yeah. whatever so it's like they're not at those places because they're at home mm. it's it's like you lead a young adult ministry yeah and i did as well for a while and it's like the criticism early on was like oh it's the meat market it's the meat market like people just go there because they're trying to find somebody and we were like man if if some dude is here like unhealthy playing the game yeah. like playing the numbers game mm. like we're just gonna bring him up on stage and just <laughs> tell all the ladies hey he wants your number he's asking everybody for their number just so you know yeah but but i hope healthy relationships are born out of this totally. yeah, like i hope sure. it becomes like, like the i hope the net to meet someone i hope the net in waco texas becomes the single greatest place to find a spouse and that like we're able to inside the church kind of na- help yeah. people navigate that right exactly exactly but like like there's there's that painting that you've shown on Sunday, yeah, Norman Rockwell yeah. of like Ooh. Sunday morning of the mom going to church and the two the two kids falling behind and the yeah. dad's reading the newspaper and the yeah. son's watching the dad. Like yeah. what's what's in men that were less inclined to go to church? Yeah, because I I agree that like guys struggle maybe a bit more with the like phobo, the fear of better options, like in dating. But in when I look at like the way young adults are pursuing God, that's yeah. where I feel like I see a huge discrepancy. And I don't know why. Yeah, I think it's important to say right here too. We're speaking in generalizations, totally. which is always dangerous. I mean, there's there's prop there are ladies where this squarely lands on you. Like this yeah. is your problem. Right. Um, it just generally speaking, it's guys. But I, I see lots of ladies all the time overlooking amazing yep. guys. Yep. Uh, because they're they're trying to find, you know, the doctor who who gets paid seven figures and in his home know. all the time. And yeah, it's just yeah. like hey, it's just at the end of the day, it's not Christian. Like if that's the greatest desire of your heart, you I 
I'm going to venture to guess you don't have a relationship with Jesus, mm -hmm. which sounds really judgmental. And I'd be like, no, nah, it's kind of pattern recognition. My heart's not to judge you. It's like, I hope you have a relationship with Jesus. But as you think about relationships, if you're prioritizing salary, physique, uh, job, career, mm -hmm. um, I, I'm just like, you're, you're not prioritizing the right things. And so, all right, where were we? <laughs> Uh, so, but like faith wise, why is there such a difference there? Like why are girls more inclined to be involved at church or pursuing God? Which is a big generalization. Yeah. I think that's true. Why do you think that's true? I don't know. I think there's like, I, like I actually can understand it. Like if I, if I was single and I didn't know anybody in a town, I would feel way more yeah. comfortable going home and watching TV yeah. than going to a, a ministry where I don't know anyone. Like, yeah. I feel like there's a, I don't know, the females might be more comfortable with that. Like, hey, I'm going to go meet people where I'm yeah. just like, man, I'd, I'd feel awkward putting myself out there like that. Yeah. Um, and yeah. it's like, man, I'd, I'd, like playing golf is more fun than listening to JP Sermon. So, Do you think the concept of God is easier for women to grasp? Like, is it generally speaking, yeah. is it easier for women to pray? Like, generally speaking, is it easier for women to read the Bible and study it? Like, I, th I think it is just because I've just because I've like seen this. I've been in ministry long enough to see it. Yeah. So I, I think it is. I don't know why. Do you think do you think God created man and woman to pursue him differently? Because you might even go like, generally speaking, is it easier for men to share the gospel? Than women and I, I I don't know I think so maybe is that true I mean between the two I of us know. it is true but I don't know I'm even thinking like back to the fall is there anything there like the Lord said that like work would be a toil for men but like relationships in between men and women would be hard for women their toil would be in childbirth and like I'm like is there even something there that makes it hard for men to approach God. Maybe it's just the way church is designed. Like if you think about it, like you're sitting and you're listening, that might be hard. Like my boys are really active. I don't know if that could be different for like guys and girls or oh even the, the concept <clears throat> of like discipleship. Like, like you said, we are more relationally dr driven. And so I seek out women to like mentor and disciple me and pour into me, but I don't know if guys necessarily do that. And then even just the concept of sitting across from someone and burying their soul, I feel like is yeah. way easier for women than it is for guys. Yeah, I think Yet it's that's like, a, like where a lot of fruit happens. A vulnerability thing. Of yeah. Like, I don't, I don't want to ask anyone else for help because yes. I got it. And it's like, I don't even really want to ask God for help because I got it. Like, I'm a, I'm a man. It might be humility. Yeah. Hmm. It might be pride. Yeah. Of like, we know we need community. We know we need God. We, need, we know we need his help because, I don't know, we are the weaker vessel after all. I said that in quotes, but it's in the Bible. But I'm like, maybe said that's it harder. Really quietly. <laughs> what? You said it real quietly. Okay, well, I said it. That's K. Davidson yeah. at. Actually, it's not. JK, JK. So if if there's a like guy listening, what what do we what do they need to hear? What do they need to do? Like if they're on the fence of following Jesus. Well, passivity. Sorry, we talk about that. That that is a common struggle with men, like in dating. But I could see that with faith too. Like if it is your struggle it's in it. one area, it's probably going to be. They call it the sin of Adam. Yeah. So because so like God, go back to the God ball. gave, God gave Adam the instruction. Um, he's like, hey, don't do not eat from the tree. And what's interesting is then, Eve eats from the tree, but then like Adam inherits the punishment and you're like man what did he, what did he do you know and it's like well he's the one that the instruction was given to so he's held responsible and so i think that apathy and he was right there and he didn't do anything yeah and he and he blamed her yeah he says the woman you gave yes. me yes did this and so i think that ap apathy leads into all things for men like that's the temptation is like men um when we are not filled with the spirit when we're vulnerable to the attacks of the enemy it's like we just want to veg and watch mm. sports, like sit down, watch TV, watch a movie, scroll on our phones and like ch and really check out and remove. Mm. And what God is calling men to is really a deeper engagement. In fact, the essence of uh, one of the aspects of masculinity is to engage, is to initiate, mm. is to bring order to confusion. Um, and so I think that 
I think that's at play is it is good does go back to the fall yeah. and so I think guys you know we are the scripture says we have a ministry of reconciliation there's an aspect that God is using us to put things back together uh, until he comes and finishes the job through his son Jesus the return of Christ and so I think a part of us is like trying to to engage in healthy relationships I think marriage is misunderstood too like I mean I've said many many times the, we have more matchmaking, more dating apps, more personality profiles, mm -hmm. and and we're not good at marriage. And so the better we get at dating, the worse we get at marriage. And so I think guys need to reframe what marriage is. It's you looking for a ministry partner to do life with. You're looking for someone who's going to raise your children with you, partner with you in raising children, someone who's going to partner with you in managing the household someone who's going to partner with you in life and doing ministry. And so it's like that. I think guys just, and especially today, I think the over-sexualization of our culture is guys see relationships through the lens of sex, which you're going to do if you have a really healthy sex life 0.6% of the time. 0.6% of the time. If you've got, if you have sex often, wow. it's 0.6% of the time. So you've got to find something to be really good at 99.4% of the time, right? And I, I think that's the part that's lost. And that's why I think divorces and marriages aren't happy and whatnot, I think, because a lot of guys are apathetic and see relationships through the lens of sex. Yeah, I, I think it's also like a uh, misunderstanding of what Christianity is. Like, guys see it mm -hmm. as like, oh, I since I'm a yes. bad person, I'll go there to make myself feel better or like, be in this love relationship with Jesus versus like, man, this is what you're made for. Yeah. Like this, this will make you fully alive, sets you on mission yeah. and motivate you like nothing else. Yeah. Like, like this is what you're made for, not poker nights on Friday night. Mm. Uh, it's just a misunderstanding of, of, of the gospel. So, I, I mean, I think back of, on just like relationship counseling through the years, newlyweds, getting married. And like, there's been a, a few times. It doesn't happen often, but it has happened where like couples can't have sex, and and the guy is devastated and angry and all of these things. And I think it really is. And I I know that some of that is understandable. Like the disappointment is understandable, but I think it's the exposure of an idol, mm. where it's like, man, this this was the idol. And I think it's the idol idol of our culture, is is you know pleasure. Yeah. So what what defines yeah. a godly guy? Like, think think of the godliest young adult you know. He's someone who loves God with all his heart, soul, mind, and strength, and loves his neighbor as himself. Um, so that's a godly guy. The things that I've said to inspect, I love the list in First uh, First Timothy four twelve. Uh, do not it says set an example for believers in speech, conduct, love, faith, and purity. And so speech, what comes out of their mouth, that's what's in their heart. Conduct, how do they act toward people who can do nothing for them in return? Love, what are the objects of their affection? Faith, what do they believe about God? How, how strong is their faith? And purity, are they, are they committed to honoring the marriage covenant? And I've said it many times, but I'll say it many more times. A dude who will pursue intimacy with you outside of marriage is communicating to you that he doesn't value marriage and that he's willing to go outside the marriage covenant for intimacy. He's telling you that straight up. Mm. Same in some, some ladies. Like totally. ladies who are pursuing physical intimacy with you are communicating to you that they do not value the covenant of marriage, that they are willing to go outside of the marriage covenant for physical intimacy. So when they do, you shouldn't be surprised, right? It's like there, there's very few people, I'm seeing this all the time, very few, few people who have sex before they get married, right? So they have sex, they get married, and then one of the partners has an affair and they're like, oh, I get it because they told me this mm. would happen because we had sex before we were married. So because he had sex with somebody he wasn't married to, he's really telling me he's willing to have sex with people he's not married to. Dang. And we just don't think that no, way. But that's sure, no. true, man. Like, that's the way it goes. That's the way it plays out. we got to think that way. you got to understand, like, there's wisdom to God's instruction. Yeah. So for the ladies listening, what do we do when... We like I feel like all we're doing is acknowledging that their reality exists, that they go to church and there are not a lot of good godly guys out there. So is our like I'm, advice to you today like we see you and we're sorry? Is there any hope y'all can give them? I mean I nope. 
Like multiple, <laughs> just kidding, just multiple kidding. times I've gotten emails from girls so all over the country times. saying, hey, Are help you... help me out. It's real. Oh, okay. like, <laughs> oh no, that's, that's, not, that's not where I'm going. <laughs> all the time I get emails from <laughs> ladies, <laughs> Adelaide. Where it's that. like, yeah, do you know anyone in this what area? In yes. Help. Yeah. help. It's not maybe I really just a hear. location problem yeah. is what we're saying. Yeah. It's like if you're listening to this, it's not just because you live maybe in a small town. It's yeah. happening in big towns too. I'll go practical and just say, I'm not a girls can't make the first move guy. I don't see that in the Bible. Um, you are choosing your problems. You got to be wise with that. But I think that if you're interested in a guy, you can tell him that you're interested in him. Yeah. Uh, love must be sincere. Romans 12 says. So if that's the reality, that's the truth. I think you can share it. Don't be weird about it. I think uh, a lot of girls, again, generalization, but a lot of girls struggle with control. Mm -hmm. So I, I get this DM a lot or the Friday Q&A on Instagram a lot is um, why would a guy ask me for my number if he's not going to call me? Like, I don't know. Mm. I know. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, because he's scared because he w had the courage to ask for your number and then he chickened out mm -hmm. or he changed his mind. I mean, any all of those realities are could be the possible. And it's like we just don't know. And that we got to be OK with not knowing yeah. some in some ways. And then just as Nate said, I think you let godly couples know that, you know, and say, hey, do you, is there, do you know of anyone? Do you know of anyone? that you can set me up with? Is there a God-fearing guy that I may not know? And um, and just solicit the help of, of married people. Or even guys that you do know that you just like aren't yes. giving the chance to. And the That's longer I'm married, the, the more I, I am totally for yeah. uh, like, like pre-arranged dating yes. relationships where older people that have yeah. been married, they're like, I this see this in really, him, yep. Yep. I see this in you, and yep. you don't see it or you're looking yep. at other things. I'm yep. just telling you 10 years from now, like I've seen you do this with, with yeah. people and it's like, yeah. From this side of things, yeah. I I wouldn't have liked that yeah. to just be forced to be. Yeah. Well, I'm not yeah. saying be forced, yeah. but. Uh, and just like don't don't think marriage is a greater prize. Yeah. I don't want you to miss out yeah. on the beauty of singleness yeah. because you're so, you you you're so obsessed with the idea of marriage. Yeah. And I think a lot of ladies make that mistake, yes. guys too. But you can be so That's obsessed that with that. Yep. And then guys, if you're a God fearing yep. man and you desire marriage, like there there is an abundance of women around you. You need to know that's a matter of fact, stop saying arguing with me in your head, not at my church, this and that, whatever. It's just absolute fact. There's a lot of God fearing women around you. Find one and ask her out and and see if she's your wife. And and your standards might be too high. Mm -hmm. Like you may be looking for the Mother Teresa, supermodel, serving orphans on the, on the weekends. It's just like chill with all that, okay? Find a God-fearing woman who would be a great mom and a great wife and, and cherish her for the rest of your life. That's good. It dawned on me that you wanted to wear that outfit because your husband's at work today. You're oh. trying to look cute for your man. <laughs> no. I got it. I had full circle. It, it hit me about halfway birthday. through recording. I was like, I know what she's doing. I truly thought y'all think it was funny, but whatever. Uh, why, would you, why would we think that's funny? <laughs> Right. Uh, and right. girls, the last thing I would say is like all the things you said, and give a guy a chance. Give him, give him a shot. Give him a shot. Shoot your shot, cause I'm coming in hot. No, you're not. Yeah, that's true. All right, guys, thanks for <sighs> listening. Luck. We hope to <laughs> chat with you next week. Why don't Why don't we go longer? Oh yeah, you're cheating on us. Wow. Yeah. How you said that? With another podcast. You're so weird. It's so hurtful. All right. And by the way, he's yeah. going to my literally my favorite place on earth, and he's not taking me. Yeah. Uh, that? Um, Liberty? The only reason oh. the only reason I'm not taking you though is because I didn't want to. <laughs> At least he's honest. I, Clarity is I, kindness. Listen, man. I love Lynchburg, Virginia. All right. All right. Bye. See you guys. <laughs>